G'day everybody, where's Wally here? So once again, Flatsoid is making waves in the swimming pool of derp. He's managed to make a video more cringeworthy than the famous salted egg video by the lab coat wearing sleepy warrior. And as luck would have it, Rachy Five Zeros did an amazing takedown of the derp by Flatsoid. So your control variables. Number one, water kept at a constant temperature. You didn't measure the temperature, Flatsoid. So that's an assumption. Number two, water level stays constant. Let's see. If we look at this green thing over here, we can see the water level before the orange is added. Oh, now half of the green thing is missing. Now the orange has been added. Oh, now we can see more of the green thing. So yeah, your um, water level didn't stay constant, did it, Flatsoid? She pointed to pretty much all the mistakes he made in his test method. It's well worth a watch, and now I don't have to bother. I can do something more fun. And the link to Rachie's video is in the description as always. Now there is one comment that got the Wally brain ticking over. Stringer News suggested that he should toss in the peel and watch it sink too. So, so apart from carving the orange into a duck shape, what else will float? Well, air floats. Or does it always float? Now I recall someone saying that scuba tanks when full of air will sink and when empty they float. Now I think we can make an experiment of that. So let's take two identical scuba tanks, one full and one empty or at the reserve pressure, and toss them into water. The tanks are the same and the volumes are the same and the water temperature is the same and the only difference is that one is full of compressed atmosphere air if you will. So when dropped into water they will float or sink exactly identically as gravity has no effect on gas. The null hypothesis is that the air is also affected by gravity and the mass of air in the tank will make the container go down go boom boom thus proving air has mass and the irony of a container of air going down going boom boom will not be lost on anybody. So let's see, roll VT as any sensible person would say right about now. Wally, what on earth do you think you're doing? Stop it. We're full cylinder here and I have an empty one and all I'm going to do is put them in the water just so you can see. Empty cylinders float, full cylinders are going to sink. So if I take my empty cylinder here and I put it inside the water, what you're going to see here is my empty cylinder is actually going to float. So I'm going to put this in the water real quick here. It'll take a moment, but you're going to see that the cylinder comes right back to the surface. And it's actually at the reserve pressure right now. So it's at about 500 PSI, which would be reserved for us here in the United States. Now, if I take my full cylinder and I put it in the water, what's going to happen is as soon as I let it go, I'm going to have to go back in the water and get it, but you're going to see it's just going to sink right to the bottom. Well, the near empty tank is bobbing. The full air tank is sinking like Jack after Rose gave him a push. So it seems that the hypothesis is not supported at all. And therefore the null hypothesis is proved. The air in the container does indeed add mass to the container. And as the volume is remaining the same, the density is increased to above the SG of 1 and so it sinks. So adding extra mass without changing the volume or any other variable has resulted in the greater attraction towards the center of the Earth. Science proves gravity. Who knew? Oh wait, we all knew. Now let's finish by acknowledging a few special comments made by Flatsoid. You will never hear this sort of thing anywhere else. It's a rare treat. This is an orange. We're going to use this for the science experiment today. What is postulated? While gravity says that if you increase the mass, it will accelerate towards the ground. But what happens if we decrease the mass? Should it mean it has more of a buoyant force acting upon it from the other side, which would cause it to go up? Well, Flatsoid identified the orange correctly, so that's good. But no, the buoyant force would only change if the density of the orange changes. Cut a sinker in half and it will still sink. Then you move on to peer review. Peer review is simply sending the data onto someone else. Peer review. Well, I'm so glad to see Flatties to finally get that peer review is a vital part of the scientific method. And one I fear that you may not like by the next day or three. Sending it on to your peers to be able to review it, to do the experiment for themselves, and to either validate or invalidate the results. Validate or invalidate? 
And what happens when reviewer two, it's always reviewer two, we know it's always reviewer two. What do we do when any reviewer tells you that you're being a numpty? Well, you must address their review. And what is it that you cannot do? You cannot tell them that they are simply butthurt. The displacement shows the distribution of the pressure over the surface area to give its difference on observation. Just as you would see a huge container ship with thousands of tons able to float on the ocean and with a bowling ball only a few kilograms able to sink. Now, if we had to flatten out that bowling ball, it would displace enough pressure over the surface that thus it will not sink. Lol, no, a bowling ball, whether it's a ball or a flat disc, will still sink. That any particle of matter in the universe attracts any other with a force varying directly as a product of the masses and inversely as the square of the distance between them. So in other words, the larger mass will attract the smaller mass more and the distance between them would give them a different accelerative rate. No mate, the force between them is the same. And you even have it the same. You have F1 equals F2 on the screen. The acceleration of each is different due to their mass being different. A equals F divided by M and all that. Mate, you are well in over your head, ironically enough. And the funniest part of all this is how many of you suspected that this wasn't even an original idea by Flatsoid. It was the mental midget sleepy warrior. That's why there is mega fail all over this experimentationalisms. Or was it? There seems to be other websites which are suggesting these experiments too. Thanks Kenny for that. So what I love to do when talking about RDD is talk about directionality of the RDD vector. It's always aligned with the gravity vector, isn't it? Well, Flatsoid mentions up and down many times in his video, but where are they arising from in the first place? Do these not already depend on something? When an object is no longer supported by someone or something, it will fall, accelerate downwards from the elevation to the ground. So this would be me picking up an orange and letting it go and it falls to the ground. This is the natural observed phenomena. Now, the way to test if gravity is the cause of the directionality in RDD is to remove gravity. So if I put a fizzy tablet into water, which way do the CO2 bubbles go? Well, they rise. They go up, you say. You say that this is due to RDD and then you follow that claim with you Muppet Wally. Okay, then if the tablet was placed into water and the water was in free fall, which way would the CO2 bubbles move? I suggest that they would go totally random directions or not move at all. Most of the CO2 is not even moving to the surface in this water ball. The ball is just expanding and becoming opaque as the light is diffused by all the tiny CO2 bubbles in the water ball. And all those CO2 bubbles of low density suspended in the media of the higher density water. Just how great is that? So you can see a scientific experiment forming here, can't you, Flatsoid? Yes, you can. Two cases where the fizzy tablet is placed into the water, reacting to make CO2 bubbles in the water, and we observe which way they move. Case A, when the water is stationary in a 1G environment, when the water is subject to gravity, the CO2 bubbles rise to the surface. But in case B, when the water is stationary in a 0G freefall and weightless environment, which way do they go? They don't go any way at all. Now, do you agree that this would be a way to test the hypothesis that gravity provides the direction of RDD force that you observe? The IV is gravity, and it's manipulated to be present or absent in a free fall, like in a vomit comet, or, or stationary on the Earth in the Earth's gravitational well. And a big thanks to Sochi Noguchi for showing us all this. Thanks, Flatsoid. I look forward to hearing how you're going to deal with this one. Probably the same as you deal with everything. You put your head in the sand and just hope Wally goes away. I'm not. あの、こう来ますよ。なってきましたね。まずは水水の玉を大きく作らないことには何も始まらないので。どうでしょうか。逆さ向きに見えてきたでしょうか。<笑> あ、水がね、大きくなってくるとね、気をつけないと剥がれていっちゃうので、慎重に慎重に今大きくしております。
かがでしょうかうまく反対向きに見えてるでしょうかこんな感じでございます。あ、いました。まずはこれを。閉じてですね。ぽよん。ぽよんぽよんぽよんぽよんぽよん。はい、ね、見事に逆さに映ってますね。ポヨンポヨンポヨンポヨンポヨンこれは見てるだけでも楽しいですけどちょっと浮かせてみましたこんな感じでうまく安定してますねさてこれにですねあの水に入れるとシュワーって泡が出るやつあるでしょそれをねうまいこと入れてみたこれ結構ね大変なんですよ難しいうまくね止めないことにはね始まらないんですけど入れますねおどうでしょうかこんな感じでございますあっという間にあプチプチいってるすげえすげえおお泡が外に向かってバンバン出てますねすごーいこんな感じでございます。すごい反応です。おお、炭酸ガスがね、こう、水の中で、こう、いっぱい出てるんですけど。なかなか強烈です。女<笑>性、半分しか入れなかったんですけど、すごい、すごい香料ですね。はい。お安定してますねちょっとね泡でいっぱいになりましたで泡の分ちょっとね大きくなったような気もしますけどすごいなんか SF に出てくるあのあの惑星みたいこうすごい。水のね中にこうちっちゃな気泡がいっぱい浮いてるのが分かりますこの時のためにタオルを持ってきましたタオルでじゃあ吸い取ってみたいと思いますあ、端からちょっとはいということで全部タオルが吸い取りました次はですねこのテフロン加工のラケットを使って